People with nightmare siblings, what's the most messed up thing they ever did? Me and my twin brother were adopted from Ukraine. We were born one year after Chernobyl. Not sure if I can make excuses for him due to the orphanage we were in for years, or more so excuses I make for him due to radiation poisoning. He has been an absolute monster since birth and is now residing in solitary confinement in upstate New York prison. As children being adopted by American parents, during our first year here, he took the life of my kitten which was a present to me from my new parents. First devastation of my life. He constantly punched holes in all walls throughout the house. This escalated to hurting me. Fast forward to middle school he was a full-blown alcoholic by grade 7 further fueling his rage. Child Protective Services came in and took him away for a little. However in high school he underwent intensive therapy and was allowed back into our lives to a certain capacity. But I am his twin and I forgive him as he is a part of me. Only him and I understand what we went through. Fast forward early 20s he became an addict and would steal all of my things to pawn for drugs. Even had me come out to hang out with his friends who were the same as him. He started to get arrested for DUIs and violence, destruction of property, and so on. Fast forward to my 30s, I went to college, got a master's degree in my own place and am grateful for the life I have made for myself. I have bailed my brother out of jail countless times. Seriously, I have spent thousands of dollars to help him. I've looked for him and found him in motels taking too high of a dose and spent 11 to 15 hours in ERs multiple times to get him help, I would drive him to rehab for which I always foot the bill. I have picked him up from jail so many times I started to know the police officers on a name basis. I always take my brother in and let him sleep on my couch or air mattress in my own home. He has gone as far as to call the police on me in my own home. And I have actually gotten arrested because of him because I refused to press charges against him but he had this little defense scratch on his arm and this fool spitefully got me arrested to bring me down to his level. Now I have a record but it was thrown out by the judge in court, yes he brought me to court while wanting to live on my couch straight out of jail. What crushed me was just this past year. I took him in from a lengthy jail stay yet again, I tried to set him up in vocational school to build a future, I clothed and fed him. I did everything to give him stability since we did not have that growing up in Ukraine as orphans. One day I went to work and came home and my place is barren. Everything is pawned. What hurt me to the core was my only prized possession, a locket necklace from our actual birth mother I have had all my life. He pawned that for drugs. I cannot tell you the pain of a heart shattered. I sobbed on the floor as he kicked me in the face to shut up. That's when neighbors called the police and the state persecuted him and put him away based on his lifelong offense record. I cried when they arrested him and took him away because he gaslighted me all my life that his pain was due to me and it's all my fault. I believed it because I have normalized it. I tried to give him the life we couldn't be given, my own flesh and blood twin. I cannot anymore, it hurts too much. I have omitted many details of horrific stuff he has caused over the years, most I block out because deep down I still love him since he is my twin, but I barely know him anymore. I have lost my other half of myself. I still don't know why I always keep forgiving him but I think after he pawned our birth mother's locket for dope, he's nothing to me. Sick part is that I still convince myself it's radiation poisoning that made him so hurtful since we are twins and I am nothing like him. Cops. What is the biggest what the f moment you've experienced? This is my uncle's story. He was a firefighter. The truck was sent on a call for an unknown disturbance, which basically means anything in the world. They get sent an address and that's pretty much it. Truck drives down the street looking for this address and they get to the end and all they can see is an abandoned lot with nothing but bushes. Even though they can't see anyone they have to get out and investigate so my uncle and a couple of the guys get out of the truck and start walking around with the usual, fire department, call out. My uncle walked past a bush and heard rustling. He looks over and sees a man standing kind of awkwardly behind a bush. My uncle steps a bit closer and realizes how the man is fully unclothed and standing at a strange angle. He motions to another firefighter that he found the caller and goes behind the bush to begin assessing. That's when he realizes that the man has, what he refers to, a bunny tail on his butt. Of course they try to get the man to explain why he had called in distress and what was going on. After a bit of avoidance the man finally admits that he had taken a toilet brush cleaner and shoved the handle up his butt for experimentation purposes. Being the enlightened individual that he is, he chose one with a hook on the end. What my uncle and the other firefighters assumed was that the hook had gotten stuck on something internally because they couldn't pull it out and it caused the man significant discomfort when they tried. My uncle left the man with another firefighter getting his information and went back to the truck to call for an ambulance. When the ambulance arrives my uncle meets them with a grin on his face and tells them to brace themselves before walking them over to the bushes. They assess the man and conclude that there is no way for them to remove the toilet brush in the field and that they have to admit him to the hospital for surgery. The only problem was that they couldn't figure out how to get him into the gurney without causing him to move in a way that caused him more pain. They end up throwing a blanket over him and the firefighters help maneuver him into a sort of downward dog position with his butt in the air to keep the toilet brush at the right angle. At that point my uncle decided that the fire department was done with the call and the paramedics could handle it from there and loaded up the company onto the truck. As they began to drive away he says, they were loading this guy into the rig as we drove off and the last I saw of him was that blanket falling off and that damn bunny tail of his sticking straight up in the air. My uncle did follow up on this call with a friend at the hospital. The brush was removed surgically due to the hook getting stuck on something internally and causing the man to have some serious health complications. What deep, dark secret did you learn about the seemingly perfect family? 
My seemingly perfect aunt made my nine-year-old cousin reach the brink of taking her life. My mum's eldest sister is seemingly perfect. She's beautiful, always perfectly dressed, has a very well-paying job, four successful kids, a husband that basically worships her and what looks to be the perfect marriage. Only, she's not my biological aunt. And she has an awful lot of secrets. She was adopted at the age of nine by my grandparents who were very young at the time. They pushed the adoption through because she was being shifted from foster home to foster home, and was being constantly abused. Her growth was stunted and she was very behind in school. My grandparents moved to another city, had three other kids and raised her as their biological daughter. She was a model child as I understand. My aunt got married to her high school boyfriend, and lived in blissful happiness till she got pregnant. I have always thought of her as being a fantastic and loving mom to my cousins, just as she's been a supportive aunt to me. Turns out she didn't want kids though due to her horrific early childhood, and spent her pregnancy isolating herself and hating the baby and she only continued the pregnancy for my uncle's sake, who desperately wanted kids, although when my cousin was born, she adored her and spent most of her time with her and they have been very close ever since. She then had three other kids, but didn't cope well with four kids and her career, by the time my twin cousins were nine and my mum was about five months pregnant with my sisters and I, she just stopped coping altogether. My parents lived across the other side of the country at that point, and my mum got the shock of her life when her nine-year-old niece turned up at the high school she was teaching at. My cousin was getting horribly bullied at school and her siblings were almost assisting the bullies. She had tried to tell her mum, but her mum had simply brushed it off, not really understanding the issue. As things got worse and worse my cousin was apparently contemplating taking her life, and in one last desperate attempt to get help had stolen money from her mum to buy herself a plane ticket to get to my mum, who is her godmother and who she trusted more than anyone. I don't know how she got on the plane, I'll have to ask her. What ensued was essentially an in-family custody battle over my cousin. My parents saw the issue, as did my grandparents and my cousin's dad, but my aunt didn't. My aunt chucked a hissy fit that my parents were keeping her daughter from her, and refused to acknowledge that she could have done anything wrong. Shortly after this, my uncle gave their other three kids to my grandparents to look after as my aunt was so unpredictable. My grandparents did everything to keep their daughter from seeing her kids, for fear of their safety, and this only made my aunt angrier. Her husband threatened to divorce her, as he wanted to be able to raise their kids in safety. It all finally stopped when my grandmother told my aunt she had never been more disappointed in her, and my aunt made some serious evaluations and changes to her life. My cousins were given back to their parents, and the situation was put in the past.